Once Yuji gains Sukuna's technique and uses Black Flash enough to understand his soul, a domain expansion will occur. Buddha condemned killing or harming living beings. And since Yuji gives immense value to life and wants everyone to have good deaths, his domain could be the negation of any other domain, cancelling them out completely. For example, in chapter 164, domain expansions were a more common technique because they weren't constructed instructed to be fatal. They only force targets inside to obey the rules of the embedded curse technique. As more domains were constructed to be lethal, the number of users greatly decreased over time. Now, the evidence that Yuji could be Sukuna's twin or his last finger is based on chapter 3 and chapter 223. We were told that Yuji is like a raider. He can detect other fingers within the area due to holding a part of his power. Later on, we even see Sukuna's fingers all resonating with each other, including the dormant ones that were hiding, which made them incredibly easier to find. However, surprisingly with all that, in chapter 223, Ureume failed to find the 20th finger no matter how hard she tried, which seems quite odd given her role and expertise. For example, Ureume already knew about the preparations of the Kodaku ritual as early as chapter 117. The bath was made in advance for Sukuna, and the time span since then would equate to a few months, where she would be trying to find fingers. This points the culprit towards Kenjaku or Gojo. Sukuna makes a hunch that Satoru must have hidden it to make Yuji's execution delayed indefinitely. However, given what we know now, Yuta had killed them all by chapter 223, so hiding the final finger doesn't matter anymore. Therefore, the other possibility is the mastermind that taught Sukuna how to split his soul in the first place. As this meant, Kenjaku held all 20 fingers at one point. They have an ancient binding vow due to this exchange, which allowed Kenjaku to escape Gojo's clutches in the first place. But what would Kenjaku do with Sukuna's final finger? In chapter 136, he stated he has much expectations from his son Yuji. And by 222, we see them finally being met as Kenjaku indirectly admits that he has forced Yuji into a corner while speaking to Tengen. He states that the people of Japan have convinced themselves that they have no control over reality, as no one has the courage to put their life on the line. But if their hand is forced by someone else, they have no choice but to take action. It always begins with a single step, only then you can make progress towards your own ideal. He holds nothing but contempt for those unwilling to move forward. When we link this to chapter 248, everything starts making sense. The first step was Kenjaku birthing Yuji. As he admitted in chapter 203, he's the fire signal that was the start of a new era. Kenjaku ensured his son would eat Sukuna's finger, which put him into a corner, leaving him with no choice but to move forward to the ideal of killing Sukuna. So with the king admitting Yuji has a chance, this gives context to Kenjaku's statement that as long as he coexists with Sukuna and they are alive, curses will never cease to exist. Why else would Kenjaku also kill higher ups that targeted Yuji execution? This foreshadows their death once again, since Yuki's whole research that was handed to Yuji was to get rid of curse energy from the world, as she believed in the polar opposite of Kenjaku. Now, in the very same chapter, Kenjaku calls Yuji a thing, not once, but twice. We usually label something as such when it's an object, and given that Sukuna's fingers are a curse object, it makes perfect sense why Kenjaku would call him one. His main goal was to create a new form of curse energy and had high hopes for his half-breeds. However, Chosso and the others turned out to be failures due to being too ordinary, which led him to create a new monster with a merger. Kenjaku admitted in chapter 136 that he knows how to merge a curse object with a subject as he had done so to create 1,000 culling game players that are essentially malevolent Yuji Itadori. 
categories as he stated. But whatever he created, it did not exceed the bounds of his own potential. So a cursed object with Sukuna's soul in it, when consumed by a human, would be taken over by him. Unless it's a curse and not a human. We learned that cursed spirits are attracted to Sukuna's fingers. And when they eat it, they become a special grade cursed womb. Sukuna's essence and personality does not take over the cursed spirit. Rather, it evolves it, showcasing that Sukuna's cursed energy holds tremendous power to facilitate growth. In parallel, in a Kodaku ritual, a cursed object can be created by soaking in solution of cursed energy. This process takes 10 months and 10 days. And surprisingly, this is the same amount of time it takes to give birth to a baby under Japanese convention. They count it as 10 months. Yuji Itadori is exactly that. A living cursed object that is soaked in Sukuna's energy for 10 months. This links back to Jaku's first conception of the Cursed Womb Death paintings, who are also cursed objects created with the mixed blood of both a cursed spirit and a human. The difference with Yuji, instead of using cursed energy from a cursed spirit, Kinjaku used Sukuna's final finger. The proof to Yuji being a living cursed object is him having the soul swap abilities and knowing blood bending which he gained after eating his brothers. Like other cursed objects, he should be able to absorb curse energy and even curse techniques. We saw this with Nanami's blade, where after his death, it was imbued with his ratio technique. Therefore, Kenjaku used a finger whilst pregnant with Yuji to fuse them together, going even further and beyond from his original experiment. So with Gojo's claim that Yuji has an ability that only appears once every thousand years, all the evidence points towards Yuji having some similar genetics. This would even explain why they look similar. And to make this absolute cinema, Gege references Shakespeare's Hamlet in chapter 222, where Sukuna looks at his own skull in irony. According to this scene, the paths of glory lead but to the grave. It represents the idea that death is inevitable and all humans have achieved glory or not will have to face it eventually. This means Sukuna's own power in Yuji will be the cause of his death, just like the metaphor claims. Now you may ask, why would Kinjaku go out of his way to do this? Well, it's linked to himself admitting that he he wants to create as much chaos as possible. Kenjaku witnessed Sukuna's strength in the Heian era, and even 600 years later, he admits to Kashimo that there is no one else stronger than him. This is despite his ass being defeated by six eyes users of the past that causes his plan to fail multiple times. With Sukuna being an obstacle he cannot match, and his life goals centered around the optimization of curse energy, a scientist like Kenjaku would figure out any way possible to make it occur. He admitted that the merger plan to create a new monster was his final choice because everything that he created with his own hands could only match his own skill or expertise. Therefore, he wants to see something new after living for so long that can surpass everything. But to enjoy more peak fiction, watch this video regarding Gojo vs Heian Era Sukuna. Would Gojo be able to defeat him if it was 1000 years ago?